In this video, I just want to talk for a few minutes about the ongoing war um, with Israel and their neighbors. Um, I would do more of these videos, but to be honest, if I try to uh, keep up with everything that's going on, there'd be so much to tell um, that I just, I prefer to wait until enough time has gone by that this can be done in stages rather than just report on every little incident all the time. Um, because on this channel, I mean, I can just tell you what's going on, but you could go see that too. You can subscribe to channels and, and watch the news and see what's happening. But what I really want to do is share the biblical perspective with uh, the Psalm 83 war in Gog Magog. And um, today, Iran has launched an attack on Israel so far, according to um, the Israeli Minister of Defense, um, over 200 drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles have been coming towards Israel. And of course, the drones move very slowly, and um, they have the technology to shoot them down. At this point, it's my understanding that the Royal Air Force has gotten involved, as well as the U.S. Um, to what role or extent, I don't know yet because it's kind of early to tell. But what I want to point out is how this has escalated. And people on the news are saying, we're in new territory. We haven't seen this before. It's not, nothing we've ever seen. We're on the very cusp, the very edge of prophecy being fulfilled. And What's happened ever since last October 7th with uh, Gaza and Israel going in to, to take care of Gaza, um, things have been in a different atmosphere. We have watched uh, Israel being warned by President Biden and by other allies that they need to back off, allow humanitarian aid in. Um, Israel is focused on one thing, and that is destroying Hamas in that region. They want to stop the, the missiles, the rockets from firing into Israel. They want the hostages back, which I am starting to think there's very few, if any, left. Um, it would be nice if they could find some. But they had gotten all the way down to Rafa. They held off on that. And Israel has done a um, withdrawal of pretty much all their troops except for one or two brigades. And I believe the reason for that is simply this because Israel is now turning its attention to other neighbors that are wanting to start trouble. And um, it's been a few days since Israel has struck the Iranian consulate in Syria, killing a general, uh, among others, and Iran has wanted to retaliate, so they're sending these, um, in the words of the IDF, Shahid drones, and ballistic missiles and cruise missiles all towards Israel. And they say it's a one and done, it's just a show of force for retaliation. But folks, I can tell you right now, where Israel's concerned, it will not be a one and done. What we're seeing right now, this very moment as I, as I make this video, the seeds are being sown for the Gog Magog war, which is going to come after the other war. It's all there. What exactly Israel is going to do remains to be seen. I suspect they're going to send some planes in the stealth fighter bombers um, that they've purchased from the United States, F-35s and such, to attack military installations in Iran. But we know from the Bible that Iran will join with Turkey and with Russia. And by the way, Russia, even though they've taken a beating in Ukraine, American generals have said that Russia is 15% stronger in their military than they were before they started the war. Um, they're on a war footing. The West has not gone to a war footing. Um, it was uh, um, a Japanese general in World War II. Um, after Pearl Harbor was bombed, he said, I fear that we have awakened a sleeping giant. And of course, America got involved in World War II. Uh, we went on rations. Um, things like tires, you couldn't even get tires for a while. 
uh, because everything was going for the war effort and if that sort of thing happened now where you could only get a dozen of eggs a week and and so much flour and 10 gallons of gas for your vehicle people would throw a hissy fit they would uh, be crying and whining and and all these uh, woke kids would have to be joining the military to uh, go fight and get something done um, the generation back then and, and I hate to digress too much from uh, from Israel but that generation back then was tough as nails and almost all of them are gone but um, it's hard to find men like that anymore but getting back to Israel Israel is not gonna let this lie they're not gonna lay, take this laying down they've already said their IDF minister defense minister said that that, um, that they will act if if Iran is a uh, basically dumb enough to send drones and such into Israel and attack Israel proper, which is, by the way, the first time they've ever done this, okay? This is important. We've never seen this before. What we have seen is Iran arming proxies, proxy armies such as Hezbollah and Hamas uh, and Fatah and different factions to uh, attack Israel indirectly but not directly now these drones ballistic missiles cruise missiles are all attacking israel directly and uh, once a little 10 year old girl was injured so far um, but israel's not going to take this line down if they think that they can just fire off these missiles and these uh, drones and call it a day just for a, a, a propaganda piece back home to show their country that they're uh, not laying down and just taking it and and being attacked by Israel and no retaliations well um, they're gonna find out that they bit off more than they could chew but I'm going to tell you where it's going to lead okay very soon we're going to see the rapture of the church and we're going to see the Psalm 83 war um, trans uh, transfer on over to the Gog Magog war it's going to um, proceed to that and whenever Moses and Elijah show up um, and all the, these armies of, of Russia and Turkey and Iran and Libya and Sudan and, and all those nations that's listed in Gog Magog when they come pouring into Israel Moses as in the days of old he is going to say stand still and see the salvation of the Lord just like he told the ancient Hebrew um, Israelites uh, whenever their back was to the Red Sea and they had nowhere to go and they were frightened and they called upon Moses to to rescue them and and Moses told them stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and when God is done and Israel hasn't had to lift a finger to fight now remember we're talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and the Bible says that God will sacrifice people for them, okay? If millions of people get slaughtered in the process of a war so that Israel will turn to him again and praise him and believe upon him, God will do that. God will do whatever is needed to get something done. And we're also talking about Elijah, okay, the prophet of the living God who defeated the 400 uh, prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and the, the people of Israel saw fire come down out of heaven upon the altar that Elijah had prepared and and took the burnt offering and all the water and all the sticks everything and even licked the very dust from around the altar and the people cried the Lord he is God the Lord he is God and when they stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and see how God himself defeats this army and Israel doesn't have to lift a finger to do it but God in his in his um, in his awesomeness his greatness defeats this army where 80 percent casualties and the ones that are left to live go back home because um, they get to tell others um, about the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and even in the midst of it all, God is merciful. He knows the hearts of each and every one of them. He knows the ones that will believe. He knows who will accept him. And God will spare them to a certain point, a certain amount of them. But 
they will be so long in burying the dead um, seven months there's going to be so many dead bodies on the mountains of Israel and, and round about it's going to take seven months they're going to have to have people employed just to do that and God will uh, preserve Israel and they will believe the words of Moses and Elijah and folks Moses and Elijah aren't coming to say anything new that which has been done uh, let's look let's look in Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 I don't want to misquote it Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Isaiah, I went too far, Proverbs, here we go, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Folks, Moses and Elijah aren't going to come and share some new message with the children of Israel. The word of God's already been written. It's finished. It's completed. It has yet to be fulfilled in prophecies, but Moses and Elijah are gonna tell them which they've already heard 2,000 years ago when they rejected their king, their Messiah. And they said, away with him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. They're going to listen to Moses and Elijah, and they're gonna believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. A great many of them, and, and the, um, representative of the 12 tribes except for Dan, which fell into apostasy, and I believe that's where the Antichrist comes from. Um, there's gonna be 12,000 Jewish virgin males from each, each, uh, each tribe. That's the word I'm looking for, tribe. And they're going to uh, be the 144,000 witnesses. No, they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, um, they are Jewish male virgins, and um, they. I have uh, videos already that cover this stuff. I'm kind of recapping in light of what's going on, but the children of Israel are going to have a great awakening, um, a true repentance, where they change their mind and they go from unbelief to belief, where they did not believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their King who is coming to believing because that's what Elijah is going to do. Look what it says. The very, very last verses, brothers and sisters of the Old Testament. Okay. He even tells us, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dead, dreadful day of the Lord. Mo uh, Moses is coming, so is Elijah. And what does Elijah do? And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Israel is going to believe. As a nation, they are going to believe upon the Lord. A third of them will come through this tribulation period, a remnant, and they will go on into the millennial kingdom in their physical bodies. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to do great things. And he's going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. He's going to rule from his throne in Jerusalem, which is in his holy temple. He is going to sit in the Holy of Holies. Um, and um, he who alone is worthy, he is going to rule uh, the nation of Israel and and through them he's going to rule all the nations and the kings of the earth will come to him and bow before him and worship him and pray to him um, just like the Bible says and all of these things that are happening now are the birth pangs and they're getting more and more intense every day as, as this time goes by ever since October 7th when that was unleashed it's like we have not seen and we are definitely in a different time and, and I realize brothers and sisters I realize some are skeptical because we have had we have had feast of trumpets that have come and gone and we see how bad the world is um, we see how now how the utter wickedness of, of this world and and the evil that is uh, perpetrated upon a decent people uh, who care about what's right and, and uh, thugs and murderers and rapists getting away with stuff and and the lawlessness 
this all this lawlessness has already been prophesied because the man of sin the antichrist that is coming you know he is the, the man of lawlessness and there's a complete and total breakdown in society you know whatever you want to do is okay and anything will be allowed in this time except except to be a saint and people will forsake decent government government that upholds laws and and, and has a that differentiates between right and wrong and says well, this is wrong um, and and where the bible is the basis um, it was that that the bible has been the basis of western civilization for centuries and that has quickly eroded and our colleges and and Corporations are filled with godless people who care nothing about the truth, who deny that God even exists. And sadly, many in the pulpit have gone astray. And many, many do not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, they complicate it, saying you have to repent of your sins. And they add to the, to the finished work of Christ. Like, yeah, yeah, you can believe, you can, have, uh, you can receive God's grace, but here's all the stuff you better do to prove it. Um, and there's so many evil teachers out there. We are truly in the last days, and I understand that there's brothers and sisters who perhaps have lost heart and, and just simply think, you know, Jesus coming back soon is just too good to be true. But I'm telling you, friends, all the signs are here. He's at the very doors. And it's, it's wise to ponder these things and and whatever you hear on on the news regarding Israel regarding the other nations always look through it through the lens of Holy Scripture through what the Bible says and ponder it and think about it and ask the Lord about it and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you because he is our teacher he is our guide and it is he who guides us into all truth and for those of us who hunger after righteousness after the truth he will give it to us he will give us our heart's desire. He will give us that which we want, which is, is to learn more about Him and to learn about His plan and, and what the Bible really means and what it's saying and comparing Scripture with Scripture. So, yes, this is a huge escalation on the part of Iran, and I truly believe it's sowing the seeds of the Gog Magog of, uh, invasion, which is coming later. Um, this Psalm 83 war is going to be first, and it's going to be followed by the Gog Magog war, which God is going to intervene, and he's going to destroy millions and millions of soldiers on the mountains and plains of Israel. And um, I believe that takes place right after the rapture, um, but we are in very troublesome times. Everybody's talking about World War III. You have Putin up there in Russia. Every other day, he's threatening nuclear war. Um, so we see we see things coming together at an accelerated pace. Things are coming together like never before, and we are on on the very verge of of something very big. And friends, Jesus Christ has us. You know the Psalm says, "A thousand will fall at thy right hand, and ten thousand at thy left, but it shall not come nigh to thee." And God has us right where. Um, he wants us, and we're in His protection. And he's, he's going to save us. He's going to preserve us. And what we see happening could be very frightening. But for us, it should be very exciting. Because um, we see that day approaching where Jesus Christ returns to take His bride home. Until next time, God bless you. Take care.